it's the Washington Free Beacons, uh, Bill Gertz, who joins uh, joins me now. Uh, Bill, welcome back to the program. It's always good. Hi, to John. Talk. Good to be on the show. So, uh, how'd they get the plans of the F-35? Uh, one of the, the things missing from the story, which I found out later, is that the uh, theft, cyber theft chain appears to have gone from Lockheed Martin to uh, BAE Systems. That's a British aerospace company. The Airbus and, guys. Yeah, and it looks like they were some able to hack into BAE, and then it went to this Aviation Industry Corp of China, which is their big conglomerate that makes all kinds of aircrafts, and then they provided it to Chengdu Aviation, which builds this J-20. And, uh, yeah, it's a remarkable similarities in the design as well as the features on it. Uh, uh, the reason this is news now is because the Chinese just earlier this year, I think it was January 17th, they unveiled the third version of their new uh, stealth fighter called the J-20, and it had a lot of modifications. And among those modifications was the placement of uh, a optical targeting system uh, in the exact place where the F-35 is, as well as the nose cone, the air intakes. You can tell just by looking at the two pictures that there's a, a remarkable similarity between the two jets. Now, are that are th those similarities, the F-35, uh, American F-35 to the Chinese J-20, are those, are those visual similarities, the things that we look at and can see just in the picture, is, is that, are those what make the plane stealthy? Yes. Um, the design is uh, designed so that radar beams uh, are more difficult. They're, they don't make them invisible, but they, they're shaped in such a way that radar beams uh, do not easily um, uh, bounce back uh, and give a picture of an incoming aircraft. That's what makes these aircraft, they're called fourth-generation aircraft, uh, so uh, technically advanced. Uh, if you can get through air defenses, that's that's the key to survival in the air-to-air -air battle and ground air-to-ground uh, battle. So this is a pretty significant uh, step forward. Uh, the Chinese, uh, by the way, unveiled this J-20 back in 2011 during the visit of uh, Defense Secretary Robert Gates, and he writes in his book how angered he was. At the time, of course, um, he was all smiles and handshakes with the Chinese, but uh, uh, a couple years later now in his book, he talks about how angry he was that they uh, unveiled this plane during his visit to Beijing. Did he call him on it? It's not clear to me. Um, he he tried to uh, finesse it by saying that, well, <clears throat> when he questioned the Chinese leadership, the defense minister, I believe, uh, they kind of feigned uh, ignorance, didn't know that this thing had been flight tested, which is pure bunk. I mean, basically, they did it to send a political message that, look, we now have a, a stealth fighter. That we have your stealth fighter. <laughs> yes. Built with your technology. Yeah. Well. Okay. So, uh, so how how much does that come? I mean, we've spent billions on the F thirty five, haven't we? Yes. Oh, the F thirty five has been a very troubled aircraft, um, and and part of the problem with the F thirty five, it was it's kind of a classic case of uh, an aircraft built by committee. They wanted three versions: an Air Force version, a, uh, a Navy version, and then a Marine version, which had this vertical takeoff and landing. And um, the cost overruns were huge. The other problem was, too, going back to Gates, um, he decided, and there was really no cost-benefit analysis uh, back in, uh, in the early, uh, late 2000s uh, to kill off the F-22, which is the other super-advanced uh, aircraft that the U.S. military has, and he killed that one off in favor of the F-35, and so they put all of their eggs in the F-35 basket, and then they had all these problems with it, and so it's been a very troubled aircraft, and now, uh, you know, I, I quoted Rick Fisher, this one analyst, who said that if the Chinese also obtained uh, details of the sensors used in the F-35, they could develop countermeasures. In other words, they could shoot it down if they uh, if it came to that in some kind of a future conflict. Well, yeah, okay, that was my next point. Is is or question uh, to you is so how much does this compromise uh, our ability to 
if if we had a, a fight with the Chinese, how much does this compromise our our superiority? Well, the the simple answer is we don't know until they get a if, until they had a chance to get up close and look and go over the uh, J twenty. They wouldn't really know all of its capabilities. But um, it, you know, this compromise of technology is is just the latest example of uh, technology theft by China, and there have been some extremely damaging losses, uh, the, the most visible of which was they stole the uh, Aegis battle management system, which is the heart of our modern Navy. All of our Aegis warships today, modern warships, have this large uh, Aegis system, which can track satellites and ground targets thousands of miles away, and it's uh, an amazing system. And they've fielded that in their own Aegis-type ships using a combination of our stolen technology, Russian purchase technology, and then a little bit of Chinese indigenous technology. How did they get it? Um, well, that's a that's a major story. They've done it through uh, basically human espionage. I covered a spy case going back, I guess it was in the in the mid 2000s, uh, a case called Chi Mac. It was a Chinese spy on the West Coast, and uh, he and his brother were collaborating with a defense contractor, and they were able to get access to it. But that was just one piece of the Aegis. Several other pieces had been obtained uh, also through uh, economic slash uh, regular espionage. Are, are, are we just, uh, is this country just one giant sieve? Does everything that we have that you know is important to us that we spent a lot of money to develop does it all just go rolling out to whoever china russia whoever wants it and wants to steal it they they have no problem getting their hands on it that's an excellent question and and i would pose the question to our members of congress that are responsible for overseeing our technology uh and our, our national security uh, if you realize that there has you know there are frequent arrests of chinese uh, agents, uh, usually for stealing technology of some sort or other, but there's never been an expulsion that we're aw that I'm aware of in in the last 10 or 15 years of Chinese agents who intelligence operatives who've been caught. So there's some deficiency in our counterintelligence efforts. In other words, uh, this has been taking place for decades, and where's the FBI? Why isn't the FBI out there stopping it? And the problem is that you have these kind of pro-China trade, pro-trade officials uh, who dominate the policy and intelligence community who say, oh, let's not worry about that. In the case of the Obama administration, they're going even further. In fact, under Obama, he has tried to loosen technology controls on sensitive technology uh, for export to China. And this has made it even more difficult to uh, uh, prevent the loss of strategic uh, military and other dual-use technologies. And while we're borrowing money from China and, and, and loading up on Walmart Chinese goods, uh, they're building their military at a very rapid rate. I think they, they if I'm not mistaken, a recent story said they were going to increase defense spending 12 percent this year. Yes, and uh, it's an aggressive uh, military buildup, and they're not building up their military uh, in a in, the, in a Soviet style way. In other words, they're not building missiles that to counter U.S. missiles. They're going at it in an asymmetric way. They're look. They've decided. Look, we know how to defeat. The U.S. Uh, if we attack their satellites, we can cripple their military in any conflict. If we break in and use cyber attacks, we can shut down their communications network and they won't be able to command uh, their forces. Uh, if they develop submarines and uh, special uh, advanced uh, guided ballistic missiles to attack our aircraft carriers, they can prevent us from even defending our allies in Asia. And that's, that's the most immediate problem. Right now, the Chinese are gearing up for a war or some type of conflict with the Japanese over the uh, disputed Senkaku Islands. Bill Gertz, <laughs> um, the um, uh, senior editor of the Washington Free Beacon and uh, security analyst, defense analyst. Bill, it's always good to talk to you. It was a great piece. I really enjoyed it today. Thank you very uh, much. And you can. Uh,